this computer, and then we're going to go live on Facebook as well. Uh, share screen. Um, how's everybody doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good, good. Doing very well. I like. I like. Really good. Good to see all of you. Rosario, Caitlin, Olivia. Uh, is that Fanny as well? Uh, no, I'm Bridget. Would it be easier if we went on separate devices or should we just go on the same one? You guys are fine. Oh, I didn't even see you were up there. So Bridget and Olivia are in the same. Okay, perfect. That works. Great. Uh, and let's see, how do we go live on Facebook? Boom. Let's get this thing going. That should do it. Can I say something real quick? You can say whatever you want. If it makes it any easier, you could just call me Rosie. I'm okay with Rosie or Rosario. Either one works for me. Rosie, okay, gotcha. And let's see, are we live on Facebook now? Our chat. Okay, perfect. So, great. Now we are fully documented. Uh, typically, just so you so you know, uh, I really really appreciate you girls being able to come out and and support yeah. um, the poetry competition. Uh, a lot of our members come. I think typically, you know, it's like 102 right now. So a lot of people will start showing up. I think like around 105, 107. It's kind of the New York thing, like 10 minutes late or whatever. Uh, but we can't wait to hear you guys' poems. Uh, Robert Kramer was the actual judge, and uh, did you, I was thinking that maybe, Robert, if you had some sort of um, thought, thoughts on the poems. Actually, I was in the process of moving and did not pay the amount of attention that I, I should have, and I, I, I apologize for that. Uh, but I wanted to thank the uh, students from Mary Lewis Academy for persisting during the during the COVID experience uh, when everybody else seemed to give up or so many schools gave up and you guys kept kept uh, kept writing and uh, also the, is your teacher here one of she'll, she'll be joining us uh, she'll uh, be joining us hopefully a little bit later she said she'll try to make it in like 135 140 hmm. so we'll see uh, apparently she's in classes you know as a teacher but i just wanted to attach a personal note here that i used to go when i, when I was in high school i used to go to dances at mary lewis uh, i don't know if you still have have dances with other schools together with other schools you no. uh, well, anyway, I have happy memories of Mary Lewis, and I was hoping my sister would go there, but she chose Dominican Commercial instead. So anyway, thank you guys for participating. Uh, Robert Kramer. Robert Kramer is a old time alum of Xavier High School here in uh, New York City. So the thrill of his year as a young man was to go and meet the young, beautiful women of Mary Louise Academy for the dance that they had. Um, and he was asking whether or not you guys still have the dances, the or no? We just have prom. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we don't really have dances. I don't think there's a difference, really. It's so much to get together, if you think about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, dancing used to be a big thing. Um, I don't know if uh, maybe on TikTok it's still a, uh, a thing, the dancing. But <laughs> Roberto, good to see you. Gerald, good to see you. And Fanny's with us. Hi, everybody. Hi, Roberto. Ro Roberto is one of the uh, major uh, poetry publishers out of Mexico City. He's joining us today. Uh, are you are you still in Mexico City, or did you make it back to New York? I am New York. Now back yes. to New York. Great, great news. Uh, and Gerald, how is everything? I'm well, thank you. Good, good. You look well. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So, uh, 
105 now. Can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can you hear me? I, I, iPad, you iPad number hear eight. Me? It's Patrice Wolf. Oh, Patrice. Whoa. Yes, iPad number eight. You made it. So Robert Patrice is joining us. I made it. I actually managed to access Wi-Fi in the locker room. Yeah, but the president. I lost that already. I'm not gonna lie. The Wi-Fi down there, that is an achievement. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I have Wi-Fi outside the locker room. Yes, it's a miracle. If I were in a classroom, it would be fine, but I'm in the locker room. <laughs> now I'm. I can't get my picture on. I'm sorry. I'm here. Are you? Uh, are you the coach of the the the, the Mary Louise rugby team? Or... <laughs> no. <laughs> I run the poetry club. I'm the. I'm considered. So this competition, I was commended in the um, Hippocrates Prize for Poetry and Medicine. It's from the University of Warwick in England. Very cool, very cool. It's really good competition. That's great to hear. And you just, you were just recently published yourself in a poetry uh, um, article. I think the locker room is uh, the Wi-Fi there is not so great, right? It's good. I'll publish. I wouldn't say the Wi-Fi is not good in the locker room, but this is where I'm on duty. The Wi-Fi is not good. I've been I've been published. I got published a lot in First Things magazine and in America. Very cool. Very cool. Hopefully, hopefully, Patrice, maybe you brought a poem to share as well. That would be nice. David Phillip means me. They're talking to him. Okay, so uh, well, I can if I can if I can manage if I can manage to find one on the iPad, I'll read it. If I can find one on my iPad, that would be great. It's just that would... that you may totally lose me because the Wi-Fi is so bad down here. I didn't I didn't expect to read. That's why I don't have one with me. Gotcha, gotcha. No worries. Well, I think we should just kick things off. Uh, it's 1.07 p.m. Maybe we'll wait to, typically I like to wait to about 1.08 just to see who else is coming through. So we'll give it another minute. Um, but it's good to see everybody. Uh, it's a bit, look, this is, this is Fanny. Hi, Fanny. She's our oldest member, I think. And how old are you, Fanny? 98. 98 years old. Isn't that fantastic? <laughs> and we have Tom Diagidio in his massive book collection uh, in the background as well. So typically, let me just start off and say, typically during our May, uh, our May celebration, we, we usually, we've been meeting at the National Arts Club down in Gramercy Park over the years. And this would be our annual May luncheon to celebrate and remember the birth of uh, Robert Browning on May 7th. Um, we typically would have a speaker and everyone would be having, you know, some sort of fancy lunch and dessert. And unfortunately, due to the situation abroad, that uh, we won't be able to have that celebration in that manner this season. However, I just want to thank everyone for showing up and um, wow, it's a good looking bunch. So my favorite part of the year is the poetry competition. And uh, we invite over 120 high schools in the New York City area to participate in this competition each year. Uh, because of the, the current flux in situation with schools being open or closed or teachers and Zoom and all this stuff, we didn't have as many uh, submissions as typically we do uh, however, all the submissions that we did get uh, were excellent, and, uh, and uh, we have the winners here with us today. Uh, so that's fantastic. Um, and in regards to the roundtable participation element of this uh, particular meeting, uh, this was the brainchild of Robert Kramer and Tom Diagidio. Uh, Tom, are you with us? I'm, uh, I'm here. Can you hear me? I can hear you. So we are now at a roundtable. Uh, of the mind, a marketplace of ideas. 
And some of the best ideas I found in my life to be are uh, poems or thoughts, magical thoughts that come in to the brain and it just transfers into the hand and you write it down on the page. We are so fortunate to have some, some young poets join us today for this celebration. Um, so I'd like to, uh, I'd like to kick it. Why not? Let's, can we kick it off with some poetry? Does that sound, sound fun for everybody? Okay, so do you want me to, do you want me to do my wrestling my wrestling announcer voice? Uh, ladies and gentlemen, all the way from New York City, the winners of the New York Browning Society Poetry Competition, we have Bridget Farrell, Olivia Zeno, Caitlin Leahy, and on our short list we have Rosario Pastrana Palmer. Let's give a round of applause for all of our winners today. I don't know if that sounds good. So I'd like to hear our first place winner, uh, Bridget, read her poem. And just to let you guys know, all thank God, all of our, our all of our winners have also uh, recorded their poems separately. So we will have them also. We'll have this live performance on the website, but we will also have their own poems separately recorded to be on the website. Um, so I look forward to seeing those. But Bridget, are you ready to read? Uh, yes, I am ready. <laughs> and Bridget is a multi-winner. She's one of the few people that has won the award uh, multiple times. So she's, she's, a, she's a, cha a true champion. So Bridget, we'd love to hear your poem. And tell us about it. Um, so this poem is titled Head in the Clouds, and it is inspired by Elizabeth Barrett Browning's The House of Clouds. Cumulus. Chandeliers of stars tapestries of rain with prisms to reflect my joy oh sorry with prisms to refract my joy and mirrors to reflect my pain cirrus a mighty palace once upon a time a castle stood erect and strong opaque against the sea glass sky Columbus, the storm rumbles from a distance with a vengeance swift as its light it will crack the walls and set the curtains alight against the darkening night. Cumulonimbus, towers turn to wisps, walls dissolve to tears. Battered by the great howling winds, the winds of sorrows of the years. Stratus, with footsteps soft upon the floor, I tread these old and empty halls of a heavenly edifice whose history the sky recalls. Thank you. Now, now Bridget, can we ask you if, if, if you could do that one more time, but a little bit slower, just so that everyone can hear exactly every single word. Would that be okay? Of course, I'm sorry. Yeah. Cumulus. Chandeliers of stars, tapestries of rain, with prisms to refract my joy and mirrors to reflect my pain. Cirrus, a mighty palace once upon a time, a castle stood erect and strong, opaque against the sea glass sky. Nimbus, the storm rumbles from a distance with a vengeance swift as its light. It will crack the walls and set the curtains alight against the darkening night. Cumulonimbus, towers turn to wisps, walls dissolve to tears, battered by the great howling winds, the winds of sorrows of the years. Stratus, with footsteps soft upon the floor, I tread these old and empty halls of a heavenly edifice whose history the sky recalls. Thank you. That was excellent. Thank you. What was your what was your what was your inspiration for this particular poem, other than the <laughs> Um, it, when I read uh, Elizabeth's uh, The House of Clouds, it also reminded me of um, the song Castle in the Clouds from Les Mis, which is my favorite musical. So this is sort of like duly inspired. Um, so I basically structured it 
uh, according to different types of clouds. And so I did my research with that. Um, like cumulus is like a sunny sky. Um, cirrus is when the winds come. Nimbus is a storm, uh, like storm is coming. Uh, cumulonimbus is basically a storm cloud. And then stratus is kind of the fog left over. So I structured the entire poem based on kind of those different stages of the sky and the different stages of this, um, essentially this, this house of clouds that Elizabeth Barrett Browning described that like housed her thoughts. So it kind of showed the gradual like destruction and rebuilding and then wandering through all of that. Does actually anyone have any thoughts on the poem? I'm very proud of you, Bridget. Thank you, Dr. Wallman. I couldn't have done it without you. I'm very proud of you, Bridget. Thank you. <laughs> I love the line, chandelier of clouds. Now, the reason why you say that is you didn't know you could write poetry until I asked you to enter this competition three years ago. I didn't. I did not see this poem. Until, I did not see this poem on the cloud until she was ready to hand it in. Well, that was an excellent poem. Thank you so much. Let's give another Thank you. Thank you. For Bridget. All right. So, what's that? Thank you for setting all this up. I know it was difficult this year. So, it's one of the, it's honestly, this is one of the joys I have is all young, young people writing poetry. Um, it keeps, it keeps the art alive. It Wednesday, does. Yes, correct. And Patrice, you're doing an amazing job at, at really, you know, harvesting some poetic talent. So let's go to our next winner. Uh, if she's ready, let's, uh, Caitlin, are you ready to read? So this is, uh, yes, from the Mary Louise Academy. Let's give a round of applause for Caitlin Leahy in her award-winning poem. So this poem is loosely based off of Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poem, Sabbath Morning at Sea, published in 1839. So I hope you enjoy it. It's called Artificial Ocean. Do you ever notice that every single fish moves in such a way that it expresses its own individuality in one single stroke? It's kind of a silly thing I've taken into account, I must admit. It's not something that keeps me up at night, though. I don't lie awake in bed thinking about something. Even when my body attempts to do so, I get so anxious my body shuts down completely and I fall asleep somehow. I remember the last time I truly thought about that, other than now, of course. I was at the aquarium. I loved the way the tank glass reflected each room or exhibit, creating this peaceful Pacific light shining ever so delicately on your body. It instills some sense of tranquility in your brain that maybe, just maybe, everything will get better. I love watching the blue tangs timidly waltz back and forth, back and forth. Routine is their regime. The clownfish carefully guiding their young, the seahorses gliding upright with their almost mutant minuscule fins, all fixated on getting to their desired destination. Do they know that they can't really escape the tank? I feel this dragging sense of pity when children press their grubby young faces on the glass, watching these marine creatures float on and on on and on and on and dreadfully on, repeating the same swimming pattern from the last time they cycled around their enclosure, like a hamster on its wheel. If a hamster was idiotically drowning in the infinitely cerulean waters of purgatory. Do fish know that they were trapped for a reason? Do they have any idea that they're no more than a vehicle of entertainment for the worst primitive form to ever live on this earth? Do we know that we die, suffer, and weep for the sake of the unknown? Aren't we unknown to all, yet 
known by many, aren't we? Even still, we shrug our shoulders, rub off our days of sleep and unrest, and float along to the ebbs and flows of the artificial ocean, a mere plaything for some alien life form above. Thank you. That was excellent, Caitlin. Do we have any, um, I, have a, I have a question. Does anyone else have any questions about this particular poem? Um, um, well, it, uh, it, it, can you hear me? Yes. Um, it, it's, uh, sounds, uh, extremely personal to me. It's, it's, uh, it's a, it's a very powerful, uh, kind of self-portrait of, of, of a sort. And, um, not everybody has the courage to, to attempt that. Thank you. And Robert, did you have any thoughts? Well, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, but it reminds me of uh, a poem by Kafka's best friend, Max Brod, who has a, a, a poem about the, uh, the goldfish and the fish, fish tank, too, and the, the parallel between the human situation and the situation of the fish and the fish tank being observed. And Kaylin, what was your what was your uh, what was your inspiration? Uh, did you put your head into an aquarium and see things differently? So I remember writing this for my creative writing class. Um, I decided to do some poetry for one of my grades, and I was basically um, inspired by this scene of an aquarium of like in a summer or two ago, I went to the New York Aquarium um, and it was, it's been several years since I've been there. The first time I went there, I was three years old. Uh, and I remember just standing in one exhibit, staring at like the blue tank with all the fish swimming around. And I was very moved by that scene. And that was a combination of reading Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poem, Sabbath Morning at Sea, that inspired me to tweak the poem a bit. And that's basically what inspired my poem. Well, it was fantastic. Thank you so much. Robert, what would you say? Oh, I just, I just wanted to say, that I've been working on a poem about strange fish in the aquarium and those big tanks that I haven't been able to finish it. And I congratulate you on completing it for its quality. So Caitlin, that means so much. Caitlin Thank you. Elizabeth Browning to tweak her version and now Robert's gonna use um, Caitlin. I, I also um, wanted to mention that uh, there's an old favorite poem of mine by uh, Sandra Hockman, a New York poet that um, used to be much better known, uh, called the Goldfish Wife. Uh, if you can find, if you can um, get hold of it, the Goldfish Wife by Sandra Hockman, and uh, I think I think she would enjoy she would enjoy that. Thank you. I'll definitely look that up. The Goldfish Wife and Leslie, what do you think? Are you enjoying the performances? That made me cry. I know I got tears too. Yeah. Oh, thank you. I <laughs> thought it was astounding. Was um, were you talking about a, a a large fish tank, like at an aquarium, or were you talking about those that people have in their homes? I was talking about a like a big ginormous tank that you would find in an aquarium, um, Aquari not like. Not like a fish tank with tiny fish that you would get at Petco. Um, usually it was like a, assorted fish from an aquarium. And I was inspired by that scene when I went to the aquarium a year or two ago. But it could apply to these home fish tanks as well, which th that's always what I think when, when I see them. Um, and um, th there was a, um, at the, Central Park Zoo. Oh, it had to have been 10, 15 years ago. There was a, um, a famous uh, polar bear who is in the same situation. Uh, I've just blanked on his name. He, oh, his name was Gus. They actually, he, he was named Gus. 
and he became famous because um, he was in a, not a tank, but well, yes, a tank with, with rocks and everything. And um, he started to swim back and forth the same way every day, all day long, um, not doing anything else. And he was extremely depressed. They found him depressed. So they actually brought in a, a psychologist to work with him and, and gave him other activities to do. But, but the basic problem was that he was too confined. It, and a, a few years after he, uh, he passed away and it, it, was, it made the news and everything um, because we went to see him several times and it this reminded me of of that as well and the name of the poem of uh did you say oh, of elizabeth browning which one was that that i didn't it's sabbath morning at sea which is published in 1839 thank you and so congratulations <laughs> congratulations caitlin and just out of curiosity i honestly to be totally honest i'd like to hear the poem again is that so crazy if we can hear it one more time Definitely not. I'll read it again gladly. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. Do you ever notice that every single fish moves in such a way that it expresses its own individuality in one single stroke? It's kind of a silly thing I take into account, I must admit. It's not something that keeps me up at night, though. I don't lie awake in bed thinking about something. Even when my body even attempts to do so, I get so anxious my body shuts down completely and I fall asleep somehow. I remember the last time I truly thought about that, other than now, of course. I was at the aquarium. I loved the way the tank glass reflected each room or exhibit, creating this peaceful Pacific light shining ever so delicately on your body. It instills some sense of tranquility in your brain that maybe, just maybe, everything will get better. I love watching the blue tangs timidly waltz back and forth, back and forth. Routine is their regime the clownfish carefully guiding their young, the seahorses gliding upright with their almost mutant minuscule fins, all fixated on getting to their desired destination. Do they know that they can't really escape the tank? I feel this dragging sense of pity when children press their grubby young faces on the glass, watching these marine creatures float on and on on and on and on and dreadfully on, repeating the same swimming pattern from the last time they cycled around their enclosure, like a hamster on its wheel. If a hamster was idiotically drowning in the infinitely cerulean waters of purgatory. Do fish know that they were trapped for a reason? Do they have any idea that they're no more than a vehicle of entertainment for the worst primitive form to ever live on this earth? Do we know that we die, suffer, and weep for the sake of the unknown? Aren't we unknown to all yet known by many? Aren't we? Even still, we shrug our shoulders, rub off our days of sleep and unrest and float along to the ebbs and flows of the artificial ocean, a mere plaything for some alien life form above. Thank you again. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this party's getting started. So uh, let's see. Somebody's coming in from the uh, fishbowl dimension. Uh, <laughs> I, what's funny is I actually have an aquarium and um, my fish died maybe four weeks ago. And it was because they were changing the pipes out in the, the road. And so the water, I refilled the water and the water was bad. Uh -huh. I had no idea that the water was bad. 
but I filled mm -hmm. it, and, and, and unfortunately, the, the fish had to, you know, ingest that. Mm -hmm. But my experience with fish, because I like I like fish, is when you buy them and you put them in a bag, right? You put them in a bag with the water and you put them in your back. That must be like the most hallucinogenic experience for, for something to, to be put into a bag and then be transported from one place. And then all of a sudden they're in this artificial ocean, as you, as you put it. It's a crazy sort of thing. I, I, I love the poem. Thank you so much for sharing, Caitlin. Thank you for letting me share. Now, are we ready for some more winners? Let's give it up. Olivia, are you are you ready to read a poem, share a poem with us? Hi, yes, how are you? Okay, great. So we have okay. you know. Hi. You can breathe better now, and we'd love to hear a poem. Sure. So this is my poem, Love is Promised. One second, we have a problem. Olivia just got done with an AP test. Well, congratulations. Hopefully you get that college credit you deserve. I hope so. Thank you. Um, well, this is my know, the test is over. This is the fun part. All right. The work the hard work is done. You are a winner. Let's do the award winning poem. Thank you. This is my poem, A Lover's Promise, inspired by How Do I Love Thee, Sonnet 43 by Elizabeth Barrett Browning. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love you more than the horrors I loathe the very most. There's no darkness, dragon, or monster that will keep me from your reach. I love how it's always you I talk to before I fall asleep. How you take my small and whimpering voice and make it a lion's boast. I love when you craft sweet memories I long to always keep. And when you whisper that you love me, providing sweet relief. For you, my love, I would run coast to coast. And to the moon, I would dare leap for our love that runs so deep. I love the way your love only seems to grow. If you asked me to climb the tallest mountain, I would race up to its peak. And if you wanted me back, I would jump, no matter how steep. I trust your love as much as I trust the waters to flow. Although our love is passionate and there are bounties still to reap, it's impossible to promise that trouble will never come sweeping our love into knots and cause anger to overflow. I will always love you and the way you turn words melodious just by speaking. We could live in fear of the conflicts always creeping, just as in these oceans we live in fear of the mysteries down below. Yet this love is one for the ages. The stories will guard it for safekeeping. We are the example, the one they continue teaching. Juliet bid farewell to her dear Romeo, Orpheus to Eurydice promising no peeking. Gatsby and Daisy, some loves are ever fleeting. As the waves crash with Katerina and her sweet Arturo, you, my love, I'll treasure until my heart ceases beating. Thank you. Thank you. Now, Olivia, is there is there a possibility that we can hear that the the last stanza again slower with actual with all the names? Um, Sorry. Would that be a, would that be okay? Yes, sorry about that. Okay, one second. Does, does someone have extra sound on because it's very disturbing? Um, we're in the conference room and it's right next to the gym. That was the only place we could go this period since we we're in school. Oh, but I don't think it's that. I think it's a radio or a, a TV or. Hold on, let me mm -hmm. see. Uh... Mr. Robert, your mic is on. Yeah, I think. If if people just turn off their mics, that'll help, except for the speaker. Let me uh, mute, mute your mic. Try to figure out how. There's one outlier, and I think it stopped. It was Leslie the whole time, wasn't it? Oh, yes. <laughs> All right, so Olivia, you, you can unmute your mic. And we'd love to hear the, the poem again, if that's possible. The whole thing or just the last stanza? I'd like to hear the whole thing. Is that okay? All right, sure. How do I love thee? Let me count the ways. I love you more than the horrors I loathe the very most. There's no darkness, dragon, or monster that will keep me from your reach. 
I love how it's always you I talk to before I fall asleep. How you take my small and whimpering voice and make it a lion's boast. I love when you craft sweet memories I long to always keep, and when you whisper that you love me, providing sweet relief. For you, my love, I would run coast to coast, and to the moon I would dare leap, for our love that runs so deep. I love the way your love only seems to grow. If you asked me to climb the tallest mountain, I would race up to its peak, and if you wanted me back, I would jump, no matter how steep. I trust your love as much as I trust the waters to flow. Although our love is passionate and there are bounties still to reap, it's impossible to promise that trouble will never come sweeping our love into knots and cause anger to overflow. I will always love you in the way you turn words melodious just by speaking. We could live in fear of the conflicts always creeping, just as in these oceans we live in fear of the mysteries below. Yet this love is one for the ages. The stories will guard it for safekeeping. We are the example, the one they continue teaching. Juliet bid farewell to her dear Romeo, Orpheus to Eurydice, promising no peeking, Gatsby and Daisy, some loves are ever fleeting. As the waves crash with Katerina and her sweet Arturo, you, my love, I'll treasure until my heart ceases beating. Thank you. Any thoughts or questions? There are, there are two lines that following one another that I, I think are especially impressive. Uh, line four, I love, how, I love how it's always you I talk to before I fall asleep, which is very tender. And then the next line, how you take my small and whimpering voice and make it a lion's boast. And the second line is kind of funny. You take my whimpering vo voice and make it a lion's boast. So you have a, a bit of humor coming right after the, the touching, especially touching line. I like that. Thank you. Uh, Gerald, did you have a thought? Um, I'm uh, curious, Olivia, um, to understand how you came to this whole process, what was it that sparked the interest and to be able to delve into this? Talk to me a little bit about that. Right. So um, one of my favorite movies is the movie Overboard. <laughs> and in the movie, they talk about uh, the story of Katerina and Arturo. And so I had just watched that and it was in my head. And when I was reading through Elizabeth Barrett Browning's poems to figure out what I wanted to do, when I saw this, I knew that I wanted to do a love poem. And once I had the idea for the last stanza, I just kind of built it up from there. Now, is, Over is Overboard the Kurt, the Kurt Russell? Which I believe so, isn't it? Um, <laughs> Yes, who, was the, who was in the, the movie, Olivia? I'm sorry? Who was in the movie Overboard? I think it's Goldie Hawn. I'm sorry, I'm looking on her name. Goldie Hawn. And that's where they met and fell in love, correct? On that movie. Yes. Excellent movie, excellent movie. And Roberto, do you have any thoughts? Uh, okay. Uh, yes, I, I was uh, um, wondering about the. Uh, I listen. There are some rhymes in the in the poetry. Uh, steep, deep, deep in teaching. You you change from one uh, rhyme to another rhyme with the ing. And uh, mm -hmm. my question would be: uh, Is uh, you have some? Uh, uh, meter it uh, verses, or it does it resemble the some uh, form, poetic form of the brownies? What is it about that? Uh, so it started off trying to do, like mimic her um, A B B A, but then as it went on, I kind of transitioned a little bit from that, just because of what words I came up with that matched best. But I tried to still keep the E sound, but I did end up adding the ING. But. OK. 
exchange. And Leslie, what were your thoughts? It's okay. I'll unmute you. Um, I, I just thought it was lovely. I, I was surprised. I, I don't see how. <laughs> what did you say? Because I, I know that movie. It, that's a really old movie. <laughs> I loved it. What, what did you say the relationship to your poem was for that? Um, in the movies, when the two main characters are going out on like one of their dates and they're standing on the beach, he tells her the story of Katerina and Arturo with the waves. And then at the end of the movie, when she jumps off the boat, she shouts out, Arturo! Oh, I forgot that. Um, so that was, that was the inspiration then. For, but not not poetry itself. But no, just, just for the two characters. Yeah. At and um, I mean, I'm not a poet, so I I I would I can't make any comment on, on the, the rhyme scheme and all of that. I just love poetry, and I, I think you did a. I know that poem very well, and I think you did a really good job of that. I was about to put in the chat, because I'm new to all of this, uh, are, are all of you students from different schools or just one place? I think we're all from Mary Louise. The Mary Louise, the Mary Louise Academy uh, is one of one of the most, uh, and thanks to the work of Dr. Who's, who's joining us as well, and she's here with us now. Uh, is one of the, is one, honestly one of the best schools in the city, and that's just and my opinion. Where is that located? Where are you guys physically at? Jamaica Estates. Oh, yeah. and it's called the Mary. The Mary Lewis Academy. Louise Academy. Lewis. It's a public school. Or, no, it's, it's a, a private a, school. Yeah. A private school. Okay. I was just curious. Thank you. Yep. And Peggy, I don't know if I've, we've met, but what are your thoughts so far on all these beautiful uh, poems? I don't know. I'm, I came in late because I was on another Zoom thing. I wonder if I'm the cause of this dreadful audio. I mean, I'm really having a hard time hearing it. Okay. I'm, I'm well, glad you that she read it your twice. Audio off. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm glad that she read it twice. Uh, anything yeah. good is, is worth hearing twice. Um, but I was, uh, I don't know, how old are you? I, I, I thought it was uh, full of lots of grown up thoughts for somebody who is way younger than me. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you must have lived quite a life already. <laughs> is this your dream? All the lives we live. So are we ready for another poet? I totally agree with Peggy. She's lived quite a life so far. <laughs> well, let's give her a, one more round of applause for Olivia Zeno and her award winning poem. Okay, the sound just improved. Some, somebody turned something off right now. So that's good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so on our short list, uh, we have a, another talented writer uh, from the Mary Louise Academy, uh, Rosie. Uh, Rosie, are you are you wanting to share your poem? Are you ready? I am nervous but excited. So yes, okay. I, I don't know. <laughs> um, just go at it. Yeah, that's typically how poems are are written. Or, I don't know. So the wait, say it again. Go at it. Oh, so the title of my poem is called Take Good Notes. Um, yeah. Quarantine has helped me discover myself as another character. In this world, I am sick of being nitpicked because of the body I was born in and the gender roles that come with it. For 15 long years, I've shed unnecessary tears, and I have been taking constructive criticism from a few fake peers. Apparently, life without God has no love. But what about the other religions we know of because of our human ancestors? It seems hypocritical to call each other immoral when we people are so judgmental. People can still be faithful, but care for others too, please. I've already been born on my knees and I refuse to kiss your feet. Us queer and transgender people are everywhere. 
We are in both school and outside. Hopefully we're in your hearts. Our existence is worldwide. Please answer this question with a grain of salt. Do we show all inclusive love? If we don't, that's okay. We can even change that today. Don't worry about labeling, just embrace that we are all growing. For teachers who work at same-sex schools, please listen closely. Stop assuming our gender identities and just call us everyone or everybody. See, that wasn't too bad. As a student, please trust my feedback. When you properly acknowledge us students, we will want to learn. As a whole educational force, that is some news you deserve. I am one to talk. That is because I am still learning things myself. But at least I am saying something. That alone is a struggle that previous LGBTQIA 2S plus alumni know all too well. And just so you know, my pronouns are he, they, she. I swear I'm almost done. Just bear with me, please. I want to thank you for listening to me rant this whole time. If you asked me how I changed schools, I would have never even thought that I'm capable or worthy of using my time for spreading both love and wisdom, yet here we are. Hopefully I can learn from you all like you have seen things through my eyes. I'm so sorry if this was really cheesy. Sincerely, your gay friend, Rosie. Not so terrible, huh? No. Rosie? Can I ask yeah. you if you can read that poem one more time, but slow it down a little bit? Mm -hmm. Not sure. sure this now, correct? Yeah. Okay. Kind of. <laughs> All right, let's hear it. Quarantine has helped me discover myself as another character. In this world, I am sick of being nitpicked because of the body I was born in and the gender roles that come with it. For 15 long years, I've shed unnecessary tears, and I have been taking constructive criticism from a few fake peers. Apparently, life without God has no love, but what about the other religions we know of because of our human ancestors? It seems hypocritical to call each other immoral when we people are so judgmental. People can still be faithful, but care for others too, please. I've already been born on my knees, and I refuse to kiss your feet. Us queer and transgender people are everywhere. We are in both school and outside. Hopefully we're in your hearts. Our existence is worldwide. Please answer this question with a grain of salt. Do we show all inclusive love? If we don't, that's okay. We can even change that today. Don't worry about labeling. Just embrace that we are all growing. For teachers who work at same-sex schools, please listen closely. Stop assuming our gender identities and just call us everyone or everybody. See, that wasn't too bad. As a student, please trust my feedback. When you properly acknowledge as students, we will want to learn. But as a whole educational force, that is some news you deserved. I am one to talk. That is because I am still learning things myself. But at least I am saying something. That alone is a struggle that previous LGBTQIA 2S plus alumni know all too well. And just so you know, my pronouns are he, they, she. I swear I'm almost done. Just bear with me, please. I want to thank you for listening to me rant this whole time. If you asked me how I changed schools, I would have never even thought that I am capable or worthy of using my time for spreading both love and wisdom, yet here we are. Hopefully, I can learn from you all like you have seen things through my eyes. I'm so sorry if this was really cheesy. Sincerely, your gay friend, Rosie. Excellent. Any thoughts, Robert? Uh, yeah, I was wondering if there's a little influence from rap music in your verses here. No, and no, I don't listen to that stuff. I just, um, no. <laughs> it's unconventional compared to traditional poetry. And it, it has has a beat, but there doesn't seem to be a concern with the number of syllables. That's that's why I was asking, because it's got a freshness and a vitality to it. Oh, it's I see. Um, no, that wasn't the influence. Jeez, all the cars keep passing my string. I'm so sorry. Um... Honestly, when I wrote this, I was like 
kind of angry. And I, I remember like writing this, like it had to be maybe either three, not three, two or like one thirty ish in the morning. Oh, I know it's pretty with our stay up kind of. Um, but yeah, I just remember being kind of angry. I'm like, I need to write this. I kind of want to like call people out, but like, I don't want to be mean about it, but I still think it's important. So I wrote it and then I heard about this contest. I'm like, oh, let me do this. And originally I thought the contest was within TMLA. I didn't realize it was like a whole thing within New York. I'm like, oh, that's even better. Let me, let me now I have to do this. So, yeah. <laughs> Good. Uh, so Gerald, what were your thoughts? Uh, Rosario, I applaud you because I um, picked up on three different things. Um, I understood your your anger and your hostility, and it was well channeled. Um, and I understood your longing to be heard and to be seen. And thirdly, you were speaking to authority structures about the need to be open to hearing someone who was not working who it, the system was not working for and to be acknowledged. So I, all three of those things. Thank you. Absolutely. And Tom, did you, did you have any thoughts? Uh, well, the main thought that I had was that um, there's enough material there to, uh, for a, a lifetime of, uh, of poems and uh, that's a very good that's a very good thing. It's a, it's an unusually rich background for someone so young. Absolutely. Leslie, what were your thoughts? Well, I thought it was uh, very well done. Thank you. Um, very interesting and also helped people understand your um your where you're coming from <laughs> uh very very well um and as you gerald said uh position people in authority but not necessarily people in authority it's necessarily the whole rest of the world <laughs> um what what you've been going through and um i thought that part was great. Um, I noticed that, I mean, from a poetic point of view that sometimes it was rhyming and then sometimes it wasn't. I mean, but that's acceptable now I know. Um, or, or did you try to always find rhymes or was it uh, pro, it was more like prose? What do you mean by the last part by, um... Prose, I think you said. Yeah. Uh, in other words, not rhyming. Did Did you mean to find oh. always rhymes or not? I was trying to make everything rhyme. Um, you were. I was gonna. There was, there, oh. there was a long section, maybe about two thirds of the way through, that that there were no rhymes that I could hear. But but it doesn't bother me. I mean, I you don't have to have rhymes, right? The only word that stood out in a funny way to me, and I think it was because you were looking for a rhyme, was cheesy. I mean, I... Oh yeah, I tried rhyming it with my nickname, Rosie. <laughs> that was at the very end. Oh, right. Yeah. Because it, it's not cheesy, <laughs> so, but that was all. Everything else I... Thought was very very interesting, very well done. And Peggy, Thank are you. you a student, I, are you a student at the same school? Because that you just said this was a competition for the whole city. It is, Leslie. It is. The oh, I see. Competition is in. We invite over 120 high schools, public, parochial, and private, every year. Okay, uh, but then you pick one school to have here. You know, unfortunately, what happened was, is because of the COVID-19, uh, I don't know if you saw that in the news, there was a whole pandemic thing going on. And so a lot of the schools have been in flux with uh, teachers and Zoom and whether they're meeting in school or out of school and people right, graduating. Right. No one's going to prom. 
I know that. It's, yes. It's a big mess. So 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 you happen to pick the, the one school, this one school that they have the Mary Louise them. Academy. They're the ones that entered. They were the ones who entered. Oh, only from oh, I see. They weren't wow. Trying. And Peggy, what were your what, Peggy, what hey, were your thoughts? Sorry to bother you with the my thoughts okay. were uh I love this. I loved your shout out, you know, to see me as I am. And I loved your specific call out to the teachers uh, to not categorize us, you know, just deal with us as everyone. And I did think that, oh dear. I did think that, um, I don't know where you got this word cheesy. That seemed to fly in from a different planet. It didn't seem to go with any of the other words in your poem. I, I, then maybe I'm uh, right. Yeah. Yeah. We consider that word. It just seemed like, and, and to end on that note, I'm not quite sure. But anyway, listen, I give you an A plus on the poem and an A plus on your hairdo. There you go. <laughs> and Thanks. I got a gift for my birthday. <laughs> and Roberto, did you have any thoughts? And, G and then Gerald? Uh, I would just add, uh, taking off of Peggy, um, that I just felt a real strong identity of uh, Rosario coming through, and it was filled with angst, it was filled with hostility, but it was very palatable, and it wasn't this, this you know, overwhelming anger and hostility. But it, it was very, it was very concerted and you were talking to me. So, and that's, that's a very difficult thing to do when you've, when you've got all this uh, very clear uh, uh, angst going on. Did I that's what, that's what I was uh, trying to say, but I you was wondering a lot better. <laughs> one. Did I mention the rhythm of the piece? There was a certain rhythm to the whole thing that, uh, sort of held it all together that I enjoyed. Right. I, I can't uh, put my finger on it, but it was definitely there. Thomas? Um, wait, I want to say something. Sure. Rosie? I want to thank Dr. Rowling because um, she told me and like other people in um, my class and in general. Um, oh my gosh, uh, sorry. I Someone was trying wondering. to call me. Um, yeah, I want to thank Dr. Wolling because like she called me on how she said there were too many references to TMLA and she's like, you have to make it more like universal. I'm like, okay, I'm going to do that. So, um, oh, yeah, Dr. thank you, Dr. Wolling. Academy is TMLA. Okay, got you. And Bridget, did you have something to say? Oh, no, I was just saying Dr. Wolling's here now. Oh, hi. <laughs> oh, hey. Good to see you. This is the teacher that makes it all happen. Uh, Patrice Wallen, in the right corner. You should be proud of your students. They're a wonderful representation. Is she the lady standing behind the two girls? It oh, is yes. Uh, yeah. Very, very good. Well, I want to congratulate all of you. You did an amazing job. You won a new high school poetry competition. That deserves a round of applause, doesn't it? What was that about the city high school? What was that? New York City High I School didn't... poetry competition. These are the winners. We should be celebrating <laughs> their achievement. Ah, uh, yes. We really enjoyed their poems. And thank you so much for all of your hard work and help. Thank you. We've been trying to get her to the to the luncheon for years. And this is the first time we've actually been well, able you usually you usually have the luncheon during AP week. I mean, this one just got out of my AP <laughs> it had, it had, it was was doing it. It's always a challenge because yes, it is always AP week. And apparently that's when Robert Browning decided to pop out into this world. Uh, so we have like the whole, I don't know when that, that got, uh, he knew, he knew he was coming and he played it. What, what's that? Oh no, I was saying he knew, he knew what was coming and he planned it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Robert, did you enjoy the, did you enjoy the performance? Absolutely. Was that Robert's voice? I think that was Tom. Oh, no, Tom. it wasn't me. 
Oh, well, okay. I wanted to say something uh, extra. I was impressed by the wonderful quality of the reading itself, the clarity, the emotional intensity, the, the expressiveness, communication was really beautiful because a lot of uh, high school students that I meet these days, you can't understand half of what they're saying. So it was beautifully expressed and beautifully interpreted. And I, and I give credit to, uh, to, the, to the teacher and to Mary Lewis Academy. Absolutely. Rosario, uh, would you? Um, I have a friend, are you familiar with the TV uh, show Gay USA? Well, anyway. The no, but I am movie. interested. What's it called? You uh, said. Could you, I'm playing, she's a, a, a great friend of mine. We're playing golf on Sunday. She might be interested in having you on your show. Can you email me, put your email in the chat? We're going golfing? <laughs> Will do? Yes, I can forward that to you, uh, Peggy. Uh, I just want to not be able to get in touch with Rosario if she, if this person is interested in having her on her TV show. Yeah, do you want to be on TV, Rosie? Do you know the I'm show? like, yes, but also no. Do you know the show? What is it? It's, it's on, uh, Say it again. Manhattan neighborhood. Look it up. I can't hear you. It's been on the air for, I don't know, 10 or 20 years. It's on Manhattan Neighborhood Network. Look it up, and if you're interested, then uh, I don't what's know. Your, what's your email address, Peggy? Peggy Chain at Gmail. Peggy Chain at Gmail. Excuse me, Mr. James? Yes. Um, are you just going to forward my email to Miss Peggy? I'm just going to send that to you right now. Okay. No. Thank you, everyone. I have to leave, but thank you. I enjoyed it very much. Congratulations to all of you. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank you. I don't have your email. You have mine. Wait, I'll do yes. one more. And she does now, correct. Rosario, have you got that? You have to follow through because I don't have your email. You have mine. But yeah, get on TV. You, you already want to. But, you're but if you want to look her up, look her up. Ann Northrup at Gay USA. It's been on the air for, I think, 20 years. Ann Northrup at Gay USA. Yeah, I know Ann Northrup. Yeah, Darryl long time. <laughs> well, I mean, but, but decide before Sunday when I play golf with her because that's when I'm going to discuss it with her. <laughs> Absolutely. So I just gave her Peggy. Oh, I C H A N E. Is it Peggy Chain, right? Yes. Okay. But I I just want to. I just typed it in. Oh. Did you Did you find it? You typed it in. Okay. Good. Perfect. Good. Oh, here I see Rosario's. Okay. All right. So I want to thank everybody. And just to let you guys know, um, Caitlin, Livia, Bridget, if you can send me your uh, address, then I'm going to send you all of our winners uh, win $100 and a certificate for their award winning poems. So if you guys can just send me your email or your, or your physical address, then I can send that to you. Uh, usually we, we do the big presentation and there's the award and here's the check. And but you know, it's the times that we're living in. But I just want to really honestly say from the bottom of my heart, you guys did an amazing job today. And uh, it was such a fantastic uh, amount of uh, parody in the poetry and uh, the different voices and ideas and the inspirations, I think, really came through. So I just, if, every, if we could just give another round of applause for all of these amazing winners. Thank you so much for your, your contribution to society because it does make a difference. Uh, it really does. And... Uh, I want to encourage you to continue writing. Uh, most people in my experience, they, uh, they write uh, in high school. I was the high school. I was the high school poetry winner when I was in high school. And this is, you know, 25, 30 years ago. But um, that's what got me started. And that was what really got me going was that sort of adulation. And I, just, I hope you guys enjoy it and continue to write continue to read that would be my, my, my best hope any thoughts uh anyone have any comments in regards to 
I just want to say uh, thank you again for arranging this this year. This is my fourth year doing this. Uh, my last time, obviously, being in high school. So just uh, I've enjoyed every second of this, and thank you for this opportunity every year. I had a great time, and I feel like I've really learned a lot. I'm definitely going to keep writing because of this. So thank you so much. This Bridget, has been four an incredible time, opportunity. Four-time winner, Bridget. And Caitlin, what would you like to say? Um, I second what Bridget said. This is such an amazing opportunity, and I didn't think I would uh, get this far with my poetry, and this is definitely going to encourage me to write more, to read more, and I just, I just had a great time. Thank you, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity. Even though it is virtual, I have had such a great hour of reading all these wonderful poems with all these wonderful people and thank you so much for all your kind words can i say two things yes absolutely okay so um i didn't say earlier but caitlin your poem was really good i was able to like imagine the sort of animation while listening to it and i think that's a very powerful thing and you should use that to your advantage but if you want to of course i wanted to say that also i wanted to say thank you um mr james for emailing me yesterday to like come here and I find it really funny because yesterday was my birthday and I really just like entered this contest as like you know for fun I didn't expect to actually get like um feedback like like for you to reach out to me like hey do you want to join us I'm like oh wait what and um yeah that means a lot to me so I want to say thank you for that no problem and Robert he was really he was the one gunning for you he was like we got to get Rosario on there and I was like all right Kramer <laughs> Mr. Robert the boss <laughs> no but yes I'm so glad that you joined us and it was an excellent Excellent reading. Gerald, any thoughts? Uh, no, I uh, just that each of these poems, uh, my feeling is, and I concur, the, the depth of uh, a life lived or an understanding, empathy, and uh, a humanity there. You can't uh, deal with these very complex um, issues and bring it forth in, in your writing of the poetry unless you've re you have a sensitivity to a life lived at such, uh, you know, at your young age. So uh, bravo, I'm very impressed. And I concur, uh, these are uh, going to be good communicators, good communicators. Absolutely. And Roberto, any thoughts? Okay, uh, this, uh, we, we have uh, four wonderful uh, voices, four different kinds of writing, uh, uh, poetry, uh, from the intimate, from the uh, rhyme, not rhyme, uh, the evolution, transgender, uh, a lot of, of, of themes. And poetry is well and alive the next generations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Tom, your thoughts? I just hope that this is um, the very beginning uh, of a very long uh, career writing, uh, writing poetry, a, life, a lifelong dedication to... Uh, uh, and it, I think it's uh, a difficult art and it's a, diff a difficult vocation, but if you're called to it, you can't help but uh, carry on with it. And I certainly hope they all will. Absolutely. And Kramer, any last thoughts? It was a happy day, wasn't it? Bringing us all together here. and. And again, I give credit to the teacher and to the school for keeping poetry alive. Let's give a round of applause for Dr. Patrice Rowling, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you what Robert said before, how, how, what a good job everybody did of presenting their poem. And I would encourage them all to record it and put it up online because, uh, you know, get get these good things out in the universe. 100% correct. 100% correct. 
So once again, congratulations to you guys. Uh, thank you so much for coming out. We're going to have these award-winning poems available on the website probably uh, maybe by Friday. And everyone here has recorded their poems correct. So we will get that video and we'll be able to showcase that on the New York Browning. That's nybrowning.org website. So you will have all the proof in the pudding that you need. Uh, but thank you so much for this meeting. It really, it lifts my heart to see young people excited and energized and writing excellent poetry. Um, the world needs this. The world needs more poets. And uh, that's this I know for sure. So let's give a round of applause for all of our writers one more time. I want to thank everybody for coming out. It was a fantastic performance. Um, so if anything else, uh, any, 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 this is typically our May luncheon. So we usually have like old business, new business, but uh, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to just say that was enough. And thank you so much for coming out and we'll talk in private. Um, we look forward to a new season of the New York Browning Society. Hopefully uh, we'll be able to meet uh, soon. There is a uh, new location uh, that we, we found. And um, I think that it should be an exciting good thing for people to get back together again and uh not that the zoom wasn't fantastic but it would be nice to meet in person again and uh for all the uh, everyone other than bridget i apply you know submit again for next year and hopefully we'll be able to get bridget's had the fancy lunch at the at the at the, at the may luncheon you know and what did you have a good time it's every year every year it gets better <laughs> So hopefully we'll be able to do something again like that to celebrate the whole, the, 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 the continuancy of, of the New York Browning Society. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Thank you so much. Check out the website, nybrowning.org. I'm, I'm telling you by the end of the week, we'll have all these poems available. Thank you for coming out. Peggy, Tom, Gerald, Roberto, Robert, Rosa, Rosie, Olivia, Bridget, Caitlin, Dr. Wolling. Have a great day. Enjoy the beautiful weather. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Have a great day. Thank you. Be well. Hopefully, we'll see you soon. All right. So, what'd you guys think? Went pretty well, right? <laughs>